So in today's Bible study, I'm going to share with you the story of this amazing, strong woman named Ruth from the book of Ruth in the Old Testament. So are you ready for this? Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Ragini and in today's video, we are going to do the Bible study of the book of Ruth. This is an amazing um, love story. If you haven't read the book of Ruth, I would highly recommend you to read it first and then come and watch this video for further discussion. The book of Ruth is set during the time of Judges, so we don't know the author, but it was set during the time of Judges. During the time of Judges, there was a famine in the land. A man left Bethlehem in Judah with his wife and two sons to stay in the territory of Moab for a while. The man's name was Elimelech. So this man moved with his family including Naomi as well as their two sons. These two sons had their wives. One was Ruth and the other one was Orpah. Elimelech died. Naomi's husband died. But the two sons married this Moabite's women uh, Orpah and Ruth and they stayed together with Naomi and the sons as well as the wives for 10 years together. And after 10 years the sons also die. So all these three women are widows. Now we get to see Ruth's loyalty her faithfulness towards her mother-in-law Naomi. It's a very interesting and beautiful story of a daughter-in-law and a mother-in-law which we barely get to see in this world today but this story is amazing and I hope we all can learn from this story. So she was in need of food and all and she learned that in that specific uh, territory or area the Lord had provided had made the provision for food so she wanted to go there with her daughter-in-laws. So at this point Naomi is in need of food, money, she's helpless in sorrow and she feels that all these afflictions are also leading her daughter-in-laws into trouble along with her. She did not want to drag her daughter-in-laws along with her in this journey of painful or sorrowful journey. So what she told to her daughter-in-laws was that was return back to your mother's house and get married and she kissed them. They said to her, we insist on returning with you to your people. But Naomi replied, return home my daughters. Why do you want to go with me? Am I able to have any more sons who could, who could become your husbands? At this point, she is saying, why do you want to come with me? Do you think I'm able to uh, have more sons who can be your husbands? Naomi is talking to Ruth over here and she's telling her that, look, Orpa has listened to me and she's going back to her mother and she's going to follow their gods. You do the same because by following me, you're going to get nothing. So just do what your sister-in-law did. Ruth replied, don't plead with me to abandon you or to return and not follow you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you leave, I will leave. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. Now imagine how difficult would it be for Ruth, a Moabite, to go to Bethlehem with her mother-in-law Naomi, who is completely an Israelite Jew. So there were a lot of cultural differences at that point and at that time. She still didn't want to leave her mother-in-law. That relationship between them was so precious. Naomi had a relative on her husband's side. He was a prominent man of noble character from Eli Malek's family. His name was Boaz. In chapter 2 we see that since Naomi and Ruth are in need of food and money, she goes to this place for harvest and that's where she meets Boaz because that was the place of Boaz. And Boaz saw this woman working in the field. He asked his servants, who is this woman? That's how everything started. Later, when Boaz arrived from Bethlehem, he said to the harvesters, The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you, they replied. So this is Boaz. When he entered in that field, the very first thing he did, he was greeting his servants by saying, The Lord be with you. And this is a lesson for us. And the servants replied, The Lord bless you. Over here, when Boaz gives, gives that much love, attention and care to a Moabite woman who was a foreigner, she was completely bowing down, face down to Boaz and she was in awe. And from here, we also learned that Boaz had a noble character. Spiritually talking, it's the same as Christ, Christ-like, like God's character, helping somebody. Providing provision is the main thing. Um, lesson we learned from here. Boaz answered her, everything you have done for your mother-in-law since 
your husband's death has been fully reported to me. How you left your father and mother and your native land and how you came to a, pe to a people you didn't previously know. May the Lord reward you for what you have done and may you receive a full reward from the Lord, from the Lord God of Israel under whose wings you have come for refuge. Boaz blesses Ruth for all those things she has done for Naomi since her husband passed away and since her father-in-law passed away. She took care of her mother-in-law and herself by leaving her own parents, her family, her gods she used to worship and praise before. Very, very affectionate, amazing human nature or character Ruth had. Having faith in God, in Christ, can change everything because he's always willing to provide for every single person, despite of who they are and where they are from. Amen. Ruth replies to Boaz saying, My Lord, she said, I have found favor with you, for you have comforted and encouraged your servant, although I am not like one of your female servants. Mealtime Boaz told her, Come over here and have some bread and dip it in vinegar sauce. So she sat beside the harvesters and he offered her roasted grain. She ate and was satisfied and had some left over. This also reminds us of um, one of the verses which says that I'm standing here knocking on the door. Whoever opens the door, I will sup with them. In spiritual manner, Boaz was like Christ-like, like he had a character like God's. Don't confuse yourself over here or don't get me wrong. We're not saying that Boaz was God, but we're saying that he, spiritual manner, in a spiritual manner, that's what God does. That's the noble character of God. He provides for his people or his servants. He provides, he redeems, he encourages. And the same thing was happening with Ruth and Boaz. So Boaz was very concerned about every step of uh, Ruth's life, like whatever she was doing, you know, like even harvesting and gathering the grains. He instructed his servants to help her, never to rebuke her. That's what our God does for us. Even though we go through so many troubles and pains and we because of our problems, we ignore God, but he's always using the small, small details in our life to encourage us and to bring us back up from those iniquities or sorrows or afflictions. Amen. Finally, Ruth and Boaz gets married and God sent the Redeemer for Ruth and Naomi. We learn from the story that cultural differences, even though Ruth was completely from a different culture of Moabite and Naomi and her family was from Israelite. They were Israelites from Bethlehem. There was a huge clash. There was a huge difference, culture clash. But still, God provided. They accepted each other and God provided in every part of their life. There were economic hardships, a lot of different things. In the same manner, we all go through different hardships, through the sorrow of a loved one who passed away or through breakups or through any emotions that we go through and we feel distant from God. But he's always, always watching over us in every small details of our life. He has a plan to forgive. He has a plan to redeem. He has a plan to provide. Amen. And just like the Redeemer for Ruth and Naomi was Boaz, in the same manner we have a Redeemer, Christ Jesus, who died on the cross for your and my sins. Amen. And who resurrected back in three days and who is a soon coming King. Amen. So no matter what we are going through today, we learn from the book of Ruth that we have to keep our faith in God because He's a Redeemer, He's a Healer, He's a Provider. In every small details of our life, He knows exactly. As Jeremiah 29, 11 says that He has great plans, better than our own plans. Amen. So I really hope you guys got encouraged by today's Bible study and I will see you all in my next video. Until then, you guys take care. God bless you all and stay rooted in Christ. Bye.